Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Technical Guide, AWS Solutions for SAP, SAP HANA, and S4 HANA. I'm Kristen Tanner, Global Marketing Strategist for Proterra Technologies, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. We really appreciate all of you taking time out of your busy schedules to attend today's educational session. We hope to answer all of your technical questions for AWS on SAP HANA. Um, I'd first like to go through a few housekeeping notes. Only our presenters' phones are live. Your microphones have been muted by default to block any background noise. Our presenters will be answering questions at the conclusion of the webinar. If you have a question, please type it in the question and answer function on the webinar sidebar at that time. If we don't get to your questions during the presentation, I or another member of the marketing team will be sure to follow up with you directly. And lastly, this webinar will be recorded and a link will be made available to all attendees. And now I would like to introduce today's presenter, Patrick Osterhaus, Chief Technology Officer for Proterra. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you all for your time here today, listening to this webinar. We're going to be talking about AWS solutions on SAP for the non-SAP HANA products, as well as HANA and S4 HANA. That's me there on the left side. I'm Patrick Ostraus. I'm T Chief Technology Officer for Proterra. In today's agenda here, we're going to talk a little bit, of, give you a few minute overview of Proterra Technologies, who we are and our capabilities, and then we'll jump right into the content, which is the focus for our webinar today, which is running SAP on AWS. We're going to take a look at the typical use cases, look at deployment best practices. We're also going to show you a new tool set that we have developed to help with SAP migrations to HANA in the AWS cloud. And lastly, we'll, we'll focus on some success stories. So we'll jump right in, talk a little bit about Proterra. So we were formed back in 1998. We're right now coming up to our 20th anniversary here next year. Uh, we are located around the world. So regions, as you can see, United States, Latin America, EMEA, and Asia. So we have a follow the sun support model uh, for our customers that are geographically located all around the world. Our mission is to be a forward-thinking ITO services platform. We want to basically provide all the innovation and the latest cutting-edge technology and bring that to bear for companies who have an SAP focus as their, as their solutions for their enterprise. As you can see, we have numerous certifications. We're continually expanding these. Uh, we don't have our SA16 Type 2 shown here. Uh, that's certainly part of our capabilities. We have five certifications from SAP, and we are in the midst Probably in the next few weeks, we will have our global certification finalized with SAP. So again, leveraging our location around the world and our presence with data centers and cloud providers around the world. As you can see here, AWS, we're a certified partner. We've been working with AWS back to 2011. Uh, we were actually worked with their, the team of SAP and AWS back when SAP certified AWS. So we're very familiar with that platform. We're gonna be talking to that in detail. And also, we're a certified partner of SUSE, and you'll see some of the solutions that we have partnered with SUSE to provide the best solutions for both DR and HA with uh, HANA solutions in the AWS cloud. We'll see that a little bit later. So a little bit about our services, and we'll talk more in detail on these. Uh, just a little brief overview is we have two service areas that we consider. One is called AppCare, and that's our AMS services platform. So all of our services are provided fully hosted so we can do uh, the help desk and all the areas that are provided in the help desk solution which you'll see a little bit later but it, that's all part of the solution that's provided in a monthly subscription uh, on demand basis so we'll see a little more about that and then also as I mentioned we're gonna give a brief introduction on FlexBridge which is our solution that we've built for doing SAP migrations into the cloud so we're really excited about this, this technology, what it's bringing to the market and the capabilities to help improve migrations for SAP, for upgrades and for getting to HANA in the cloud. So as I mentioned, some of our differentiators, are, it's our delivery platform foremost. So we've baked all these innovative ideas and best practices from SAP in the market and we built these into our delivery platform we call AppCare. We also we consider ourselves an early adopter for cloud and with that, learning all the expertise and, and support models to, to take the cloud new technology and bring this to bear to SAP solutions. So we consider ourselves a cloud broker where you rely upon us to be able to bring that newest technology for SAP solutions. So it helps to accelerate customer adoption as well as using the, the latest 
from SAP and also from AWS. And lastly, we, we hold near and dear our strategic partnerships with SAP and AWS to stay lockstep where they're going and, and make sure that we are well skilled and adapt with our roadmap lockstep with where they're going. So you can see here from this slide, and you can say this is the advantages of going to cloud. This is the new IT model and capabilities where we can quickly you know, provision apps of any type, especially SAP applications. And we'll talk about the options around HANA and its flavors, as well as the ability to be able to quickly scale up. So we have the ability now where you can start with a smaller HANA system. And as the system grows, adds more users, adds more capabilities in the system, we can quickly scale that with, it can be as simple as a scale up or shutting down a system and bringing it back up. Absolute worst case, it might mean where we, we do a, you know, some copying of data um, from one instance type to another, which is just a few minutes, and we can quickly reprovision that system with a fi uh, faster uh, compute, which is the RAM and CPU, as well as better storage if, uh, if desired. So the scalability factor is tremendous, and it really quickly allows us to be agile, which is the next point, with a rapid deployment. So we can quickly spin up sandbox systems, test systems, um, even copies of the production system to be able to test that and, and uh, test DR very, very quickly. And we'll talk more about those as aspects. And then lastly, the, the categories about security and efficiency where we have hardened systems where we have you know, ensure that systems that have been tested thoroughly for security, um, not only the AWS platform secure from a physical and a design standpoint, but also the applications which are built on top of that, we can leverage these cloud technologies to quickly image a hardened image of, let's say, the HANA system, which is secure by restricting all the ports, restricting uh, what packages of software is running on it. So we can quickly build systems with the best security models uh, designed into it. And then also, along with, with these uh, flexibility, scalability, agility, capabilities it brings efficiency. So we can reduce the cost and the complexity of our solutions with this, uh, the cloud capabilities. So putting this all together, as I mentioned before, this is our app care delivery platform. And on the top, you can see us as a cloud broker focusing today on Amazon Web Services capabilities and taking all of our processes, which we call app care. So the, the processes around how we do security, how we provision systems from a network capability, um, the, the dedicated app care specialists, which we have as our support model. So we, we can continually focus on bringing new technology into this proven model, which includes network, um, the, the backups, DR setup, HA, all these proven standard solutions that we have for, for what used to be in the past on on-premise, we've applied this now to cloud. You can see here on the left side, that we have a suite of tools from SAP. So as I mentioned, non-HANA systems, the HANA, the S4, as well as other platforms and other solutions. So we have the Active Directory, SharePoint, and 365 suite, as well as other applications that coexist with SAP, which exists, you know, can include uh, third-party add-ons like Vertex, Vistex, um, any of the payroll applications. We, we can fully support those for a customer. And we can also, not only combine the, the best of cloud, but also during that time when the customer's migrating the cloud, we can fully support those applications in the on-premise model. So we're very familiar with this hybrid model of having non-prod systems in the cloud first, and then we move production over you know, with the migration uh, project. Or maybe they'll coexist where we have companies, and I'll talk to one of these examples here later, where they'll have an ECC system on-premise and they'll put in a BobJ system into the cloud. And uh, believe it or not, even with a lot of traffic going back and forth, it actually works. It has proven to work extremely well. And then lastly, on this slide, I'll talk to this, uh, the edge concept where we can take customer, typically customer owned processes like printing and firewall, um, the fire file services. We, we have a standardized solution where we can bring cloud like services into on premise so we can help manage those and improve the processes on site. This is a nice slide. It was presented at reInvent a few months ago. It talks to the models basically for supporting SAP into the cloud. So you can see breaking up, you know, how this may be provisioned within a customer where on the left side, 
within the AWS cloud, you, you purely have the, on the lowest level, you have infrastructure as a service. So essentially this would be replacing on-premise models where we have physical servers and switches and firewalls and, and replacing this with the cloud model within AWS. So that, that IAS is, is purely that lowest, uh, lowest row there. And then we have to think about the managed services to manage the cloud. So this green area is what you can think of for spend optimization. So looking at how systems are sized, how they run, if there's opportunities for merging applications or maybe keeping systems running. There's technologies from AWS. There's, you know, at last reInvent, there was dozens if not hundreds of new features and even dozens of new products available. So keeping up on this is, uh, is, is quite an intensive task. So those managed services, just to understand that AWS cloud is quite, quite a, you know, a rigorous task as well as the billing, uh, cap uh, uh, billing requirements to understand how best to optimize. And the last thing on the top tier is the SAP hosting and the managed services around that. So this is the, the services to manage SAP fully. So you can see how these roles can be broken up in the different capabilities of how, how uh, a provider can partner with a customer to provide AWS and SAP services. So for ourselves, our, our sweet spot and where we prefer to live is on the left side with us doing all the SAP hosting and the managed services around that. We have a, a tight expertise around Amazon, so we feel that we can best provide the SAP services as well as AWS and tightly provide a solution you know, that one face the customer so they can go to Proterra, one provider for all their services needs. Um, but certainly, Reflecting on the, the left side, these are the other models that um, other providers do provide. So let's talk a little bit about what it takes to run SAP and AWS. So some of those requirements. I'll also talk about what, you know, what's the state of uh, AWS providing um, solutions for SAP. So foremost, I want to talk about some of these support requirements. And this is, uh, you know, these are, should be said at least for production systems. It's recommended that we would also have these for non-production systems. Yet it's, it's vitally essential for those prod systems. So if there's an issue within the AWS um, cloud, you know, you get proper support from SAP. And this is detailed in a note, it's listed there. Um, there's basically four categories. One is the AWS support agreement. And this requires that you would be on a level of either business or enterprise. And this enables you to have a, a very fast response uh, where you'd have um, within minutes response of a AWS support resource to be able to look at these issues in the infrastructure. So that's a first, first requirement. And, and by the way, that's part of the agreement within the SLAs of Proterra. We already have this, so this would be part of the solution we provide. And the other three here are more technical requirements. So there is the CloudWatch requirements where you would put in the monitoring uh, integration within AWS, which is native database, to ensure those capabilities are available for those SAP systems. So just to make sure that SAP has you know, full visibility and seeing, uh, you know, the IO on the storage and the CPU utilization, just to make sure that those aren't issues, uh, you know, to help their troubleshooting. And thus, lastly, there is network requirements, especially around HANA. Uh, it's recommended to at least have 20 gigabit, which is very high speed capability. And now AWS actually has a 20 gigabit capability in some of the instances, which we'll see in a few minutes. So those are required for production HANA systems, as well as for the storage side where we have many choices in AWS. We have um, solid state drives. We also have provision IOPS, where you can specify the speed that you wish to have. And then we have this not, this, you could say the standard magnetic um, tier for storage. And then lastly, there's S3, which is used for offsiting data. So a lot of requirements. I uh, wanna make sure that we're running those to SAP's best designs and their best practices. So um, those are, it's a good note, has some good re recommendations of how systems should be designed. So talking about systems and solutions, this is a good overview of what is supported today in AWS. So you can see on the bottom, there's the SAP note, a um, lot of systems. So there's some qualifications here, um, and that note has the details. There is some restrictions around operating system versions of what you can run, what's required. So it might require if you migrate, you may have to upgrade the operating system. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how that can quickly and easily be done. 
here later in the presentation. And also, you know, there's some asterisks. One could be around Oracle. This is actually in the last year this was released. The asterisk around that is you have to be running Oracle Linux to be able to run Oracle database support on AWS. So there, there's some qualifications. This is just a high level. Uh, what can be run? There might be some restrictions and, and some remediation that's done to, to get there for moving to the cloud. That's what Proterra would help you uh, identify and, and resolve. So here's a listing of all of the certified instances for SAP. And you can see um, on the right side, specifically the ones that are supported here for HANA. Uh, if your eyes trained well for looking at the SAPs ratings, which we probably all know what the SAPs are, um, those are ratings basically to measure the capabilities, the power of that system, that solution to be able to provide SAP uh, processing. You can see here the example of the, the system, which is R416X large, is actually more powerful than the X1. And you can just see, this is a really good example of how quickly AWS innovates the platform. So this X116X large, which really just came out, I think probably four months ago, has already been passed up with the R4 family. So the processing, even though it's a smaller system by gig, um, the VPU, the, the, the processing, and the RAM, the chipset it uses, is actually faster. So you can actually get a faster SAPS rating. And you can see that this is a, it's a, quite a, an amazing thing where the older families, you can see R3 here, are not being retired, but if you're going to build a new system, you most definitely want to use the R4 family. You can see here as the example, R4 versus R3 of 8x large, where the R4 is sized the same. It's the same CPUs and the same memory. Yet you can see the SAP rating being vastly improved because of the chipset. And the kicker is R4 is actually cheaper than R3. So if you're building systems today, you might really want to look at locking in on R4, not R3. So it's just uh, it's the, the new state of the art uh, way we can build systems and keep an eye on what's available because it does change almost daily. And speaking of which, the new up there, the M4 16X large, I just found this in a note this morning, so I popped it in here. Um, that's a brand new system that's available. So point is, keep an eye on those new instances. And this is the note you can see it in. That the, the first note has all the instance types. The second note is the instances specifically for HANA. This is a nice slide that came out in reInvent when the announcements were made around uh, the new one terabyte size uh, virtual system. You can see now the scale up capability. So you can scale up. And again, if you had, let's say, a one terabyte system, you wanted to add it to two terabyte, it's not, it might not be, especially in this example, it's not as simple as just up and down, stop, system, restart it. There is a few steps. AWS actually has a nice guide that describes how to uh, convert or copy the data over to this larger system. But there is some systems with your, within the same family that you can just do an up and down and, and resize the system. But the purpose of the slide is basically what you can scale up to today, which is two terabytes for those systems in the scale out, which is only available for the BW systems, which we see as OLAP here. It's available where you would basically, you know, combine the systems and scale them horizontally. So you add them at this, in this example of these seven systems combined into one large uh, solution, which provides 14 terabyte scale out. So let's jump into the typical use cases. We can see here, you know, some good examples of how companies adopt going to the cloud and how they can start. And I'll start a little bit maybe in the middle. Um, I always like to talk about the DR being a good place where companies can start. And it's certainly, this is an area that we actually started using AWS when we started building demo systems. And at the time, the on-premise solutions for DR were very, very expensive. Uh, actually, they continue to be. Now there's a lot better capabilities in the cloud and for cost and, and the ability to be quickly provision systems. So we, we actually put our very first DR system we actually built for a company. Um, they actually have a very old version of SAP, version 3.1, um, running on Windows 2003. And this was built, I think, around 2011. So we used the native capabilities of the database, um, which in that version weren't many, but we, we'd be able to... Uh, create a replication of the database and the system to be able to replicate that production system in AWS. And they've had that for a good five years now. And the capability on this is, as I mentioned before, you can quickly copy that production system to use it as a test system, not only for you know, support packages, or if you want to do a quick DR test, you can have multiple tests running at the same time. So 
we recommend that as a great place to start if you have yet to use SAP and AWS, this is a perfect place to start. The other, the other um, the, you know, the next step here is the hybrid architecture. So you're looking to put some SAP systems in AWS, you can start with the non-production systems. And there's a lot of ways, and it's, we have webinars strictly on this content of how we best migrate systems. Uh, we, don't, we won't talk about those, all those options today. We'll talk about our preferred option only for a few minutes. So more on that in a later webinar. Yet the, the, this is a good place for, from a high level at least, we can talk about the approach. And so you can move your dev, your quality systems to AWS and have it operate in a hybrid architecture. Um, as I mentioned, this is a, one of our solutions you'll see later with Ferrar Candy. Uh, they actually have their Bob J system running in AWS and ECC running on premise. So it's a very good proven out solution. Uh, obviously, if you have a lot of data going back and forth, you may have to look at a dedicated network connection. Yet it's uh, it's proven and it, it works quite well. And then lastly, it's all in all in you know all in basically. So this is the full landscape into SAP, and we have many many customers running with this model so they many of them started with this hybrid architecture first due to the non-prods and they put all all their systems in there As a matter of fact we have many customers that are now putting their non-prod systems in so we're we're helping with the migrations of the non-sap systems also to move to cloud so those are existing systems i'm sorry existing sap customers on the left side on the right side here's the new customers and you know they, they get the advantage of having a greenfield so when they're going to start and they're going to build their first SAP system, it makes more sense than now than ever just to start in AWS and capture the savings and the ease of provisioning systems and also all the capabilities of cloud. If you want to see some really cool demos, go out to uh, AWS and Google the, the AI examples that they've built in that Alexa is using. And all these all these features of the cloud are now available within the same framework which SAP is running. So. I'm guessing it's a matter of time before SAP starts utilizing these new, these new tools. We'll talk a little bit about these services for you know, the SAP migrations. So the all in migrations, this is essentially looking at you know, full suite. So looking at moving a full um, you know, region, all, all the compute for a company into AWS, as I mentioned, we do this, as well as the SAP focused migration. So you could do, Moving a ECC system over and it's fully supported to go to cloud. Our suggestion is if you're looking to replatform and move to cloud, and if you're looking to do HANA, why don't you do it at the same time? So we certainly can do those options. Uh, we'll talk about the SAP HANA migration specifically. The other piece is, is around looking at the assessment. You know, what's it going to take for you to move your applications to the cloud? So there's a lot of um, requirements, a lot of considerations here. So making sure that operating systems are fully supported, the apps are for what AWS uh, requires. So that's, those are key areas you got to look at. And then, you know, looking at um, the, the data itself. So how are we going to move it? If there's systems that might be on-premise um, or if they're going to be retired from on-premise and we're going to merge systems, we got to look at how that data is migrated and if, uh, if there's any replication being considered. It's a nice checklist to take a look at. If you have Unix running, the, the key point here is you're going to have to look at doing a migration right now the AWS cloud supports x86, which makes a lot of sense because it's a much more cost-effective platform than the proprietary Unixes. So if you're on Unix today, you're going to have to look at doing a migration off it to go to either Windows or Linux. So that's the key part of the slide. Um, so it's good for reference sake. Let's take a look at these best practices. So specifically around HANA, uh, there's there's images that are available now from SAP where you can build your system and it, the important piece here is that there's certified configurations um, So if you haven't seen this you can basically automate the build and you can actually build a whole You know region or landscape with all automated steps. So it's, it's a really magical thing I Encourage you to take a look at some demos around this where you can provision a whole subnet and all the SAP systems and even how they do backups all within within the automated process so it's, it's quite, uh, quite amazing. Um, it's a good way to automate the builds, as well as the, the processes after the builds are done to look at how best to run these systems. So there is, uh, I don't know if it's well-known or if it's not well-known, but it seems like a lot of people don't take advantage of the reserved instances. And that is a capability for you to save significant money if you have systems running 100% of the time in the cloud. So that's an area that we optimize. We will actually look at systems and make recommendations 
for each each system type and how best uh, savings can be captured. This is one of the areas that we focus upon as from the reserve instances. This slide will spend a few minutes on because it it's got a lot of very good information and it's it's a little more complicated. Probably should be in after a few other topics here, but I'll talk to it now and we'll come back on it. So the, the first topic here is within the cloud infrastructure of AWS, we now have capabilities which we didn't have before with on-premise where we can actually provide a solution that even provides both HA and DR. So you can see that here with the color codes. So if you can see, for example, number two, where we have HA built in, you also could possibly provide the DR uh, option here by just extending this idea a little further. So I'll, I'll go into more detail to make it more clear, I guess. So in, in the dotted lines, these are what are called availability zones. And within a region, which is the, you can see is the black um, rectangle with the rounded edges, that is, let's say, in the East Coast. So that's a popular region in AWS, which is located in Virginia. And those dashed lines are what are called availability zones, which are respective data centers. So in actuality, when we have these dashed lines in number two, we're providing an HA solution, which is within the same region, but they're in different data centers. So it's protected if that data center would have a catastrophic event for whatever reason. Uh, if there's a flood that affected that one area, um, you would be protected because you'd have your HA running in this other availability zone, which is at least a few miles away. There's not a requirement or restriction, um, you know, how many miles it is, yet it's not next to it. It's not in the same data center. So from an HA solution, it's much better than any on-premise solution can be where you're next door to each other. So you're protected with an HA. And this webinar is not going to talk about the HA solutions. Um, certainly, you can ask some questions here in the Q&A part of recommendations here. We could spend a little time on it. Yet the, the HA um, capabilities are provided best within the SUSE operating system within the standard HANA product. So we can talk a little bit about that in the Q&A section if you guys are interested. Um, then extend this idea to outside this region. So you see in three, uh, the, the idea of S3. And S3 is a lower tier of storage, which what makes it magical is when you write to S3, it actually replicates that to multiple availability zones. So the storage is protected if it would ha if an availability zone for some reason wasn't available, it would be available in these other two, at least minimum of two other availability zones. So you could quickly pull that data back. So for example, this is a, 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 a lower cost option for you to do DR where you can do backups into S3 and then depending upon how it's architected, how often it's updated, that's going to affect the RTO and RPO times to bring the data back. But point being is it's protected in another area, and you can quickly pull that back uh, within to another availability zone. So a lot, lot going on the slide. It's a um, key point here is that it provides, the AWS platform, I should say, provides within its own cloud capabilities, no third-party products needed, to provide these, these options for scenarios to be able to build a great solution for both HA and DR, which in the past was both expensive and complicated. So some really cool features there. And I probably should start with this slide first because it's uh, we talk about some of the topics, probably been easier to see in a more simple diagram here. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the ones that didn't show up in this previous uh, diagram. And so the orange, Squares there in the middle are the compute, which are called Elastic Cloud Compute, or EC2. Those are the instances. So that's the, the RAM and CPU. And then those little uh, red rectangles on the bottom, that's the storage. So some really cool things I'll show you in the next slide, uh, which you can do with the storage to, to protect those systems even further, which, is, again, is a standard option within the cloud. You'll see that in the next slide. But we can also see this VPC idea. And the VPC can be thought of the virtual private cloud is how you segment this, this uh, environment from not only from on-premise, but also from within the a AWS um, systems, you know, in the architecture itself. So one example could be, it's not shown here in the slide, but you could have a separate VPC, which is going to be set up as a DMZ, right? It's a way that you would put web services, which are internet facing, and how that would then integrate back to your 
your production SAP applications. So you'd have that DMZ to separate that traffic, which is a good design practice, right? So the VPC is a, is a good way to do that. And it's this, this, uh, this slide here also shows around the regions, this concept where it's very, very simple for you to build compute and replicate into a completely different region, which the power behind that is, you know, immense where we can take, you know, easily, if you're on the East coast, we can put you, your, your production systems into the East region and replicate that over to West, or we can replicate that to Europe or South America or Asia pack, wherever it might be. So it's a, an amazing capability where it's built into the Amazon cloud. And also you're taking advantage of all the, the built-in design and networking and redundancy built into the cloud between those regions. So if a disaster would ever occur, you're, you're relying upon the best you know, built cloud in, in the world. So it's, it's a great feature that you can take advantage of for your design. This one's a little complicated, uh, but the key part here, if you look at those, those dashed lines, those dashed rectangles, is to focus upon what's called EC2 auto recovery. And you could think of this as a, a poor person's HA. So you can, if you look at what's connected between these two dashed areas, it's the EBS storage. So meaning in this example, we actually store the database and that system's all persistent in that storage, which is shared over the compute. So if that system went down for a hardware reason, EC2 automatically, the AWS cloud automatically knows it's down and it's gonna automatically start that server back up in another instance. So again, it's a poor person's HA where you don't have to have it built in within the application. It's gonna do it on the hardware level. And this is a feature that you can turn on. It's not on by default. It's very easy to enable and it's a standard feature which costs no money. All right, let's talk about the migration. So we have a separate webinar just on this area, but I'll, I'll talk just from a high level what we're gonna look at here today. So some features around SAP and how we migrate in the cloud. We, we can look simply at, you know, some companies when they're going to HANA and S4, they're looking at doing new deployments. So they're actually gonna do a new build. And that would be the, the top path here in blue on the top. New SAP deployment. We build that in the cloud, and you know if it's greenfield, that's the best way to go. Now, if you have SAP already, either you know existing business system or business suite, I should say, or BI, you have to. You could still re-implement and have move the data. That's certainly an option, and some companies are doing that for for reasons. Our recommendation, though, is to look at how we'd migrate that data. So you could do what's called a lift and shift, and that would be basically copy the whole system over. So if it's running on Windows 2008, you're gonna move that with its Windows 2008 uh, database and move that over to AWS byte by byte, or, or you could do a backup and restore. That's certainly an option. Um, the problem with that is that you're not capturing any, any business benefit. You're not getting an upgrade to SAP. You're not being able to move to HANA. You're not able to capture all the improvements on new operating systems and features provided by SUSE. So, what we provide, what we recommend is this OSDB migration, and we'll talk about how we do that here next. Um, but the end point here is certified solution on AWS, SAP certified as well as AWS. So how do we do that is with this solution we call FlexBridge. And this one slide says pretty much the whole solution here. So it's, we can do an OSDB migration, we can do a HANA migration and the SAP upgrade, we can do the cloud I'm sorry, the Unicode conversion, if that system still requires it. And lastly, the cloud migration all in one step. So the, the, the business value here is instead of doing two separate projects, you're gonna do one downtime, one testing cycle. We, we just have a, a new customer. When we talked to them, they're originally looking at doing a move to cloud, which was gonna take them, they estimated at least six to 12 months. And then they were gonna do the upgrade and move to HANA separately. That was another six to 12 months. So we were able to combine those two projects into a six month project to do all the, all the above. Move to AWS, move to HANA, all in one step. And how this is done is you can see in the blue in these six circles, it's within our best practices or our methodology that we've learned over the last two decades of doing migrations and doing SAP upgrades, as well as the tools that SAP provides. So we've actually built on top of the SAP standard tool set, FlexBridge to automate this, where you can see that in the, the bubble next to the tools, the automation. 
and also our services. So it's not just a software solution that we're providing and install and do copies of the data. We're actually fully managing those migrations and uh, making sure that there's always a good project management in place, good handoffs, good communication, you know, which is done uh, from our team to the customer in the project management and their, their business teams. And then also, I'll, I'll specify here the assessment, which we're going to talk about here next. So you can see here to get to this assessment, which is shown here in the, on the fourth step, is, is a simple registration on our website. And we have the link here at the end of the, the presentation, so you'll see that. What we do is we provide a... ABAP program, which does only read analysis. So you can see, we'll give you the source code or a transport, however you want to see it. So you can see all the code and what we're going to look at. We don't look at any customer data. So there's no financial data shared. There's no uh, organizational structure, any distribution channel. We don't, we don't see any of that. All we're doing is looking at the vitals, the critical characteristics that are needed to migrate to HANA and move to cloud. So we're going to analyze the system. And you'll actually see the output also. It's a text file. You can see that very small picture of it. So you can see what we're actually taking a look at, what's being sent back to us. Once we have that, we have a system that we built to automatically generate this report. And within this automation, we have some checks in place that will verify some of uh, the newest checks that you know, are a little more complicated that we haven't automated just yet. Point being is within a couple of days, you're going to get this report. And it's a really nice high-level overview of what to look at when you go to HANA. So you'll see here from a high level, an executive summary, which is focused upon the C-level executives of a company, so they know what's involved to do a migration to HANA and to AWS. They're gonna get a cost estimate, as well as an overview of the timing and a project plan, as well as what that end solution is gonna look like. So that's all in this report. And also we've built in a little you know, tutorials on the benefits of cloud, especially around AWS and what SAP takes advantage of there. So I encourage you, we'll see in a few minutes here how we can, how you can request that, how we can help you in that area. So talking about the success story. So these are some examples of companies that have already been running in AWS for some of them many a years. So we, we have on top, we have Fitch ratings. Uh, they are actually migrating using FlexBridge to HANA on AWS, uh, running on Suzy. Uh, they have both ERP, Business Objects, and Soulman and BI also. So they're running all those, they're moving those to AWS, and that, that's in process right now. We also have Golfmark, which they not only moved SAP to AWS, they're now moving their non-SAP systems over. So that's a full production landscape over in AWS. And then also Pacific Drilling. Similar, similar migration path requirements, moving all of SAP over to Suzy AWS on HANA. We have ArcLight. This is an S4 customer. You'll see that they were actually deployed in only 16 weeks. Uh, so very good success story of really quick deployment using AWS on S4. And I mentioned before for our candy, they're done the, the uh, hybrid where they have Bob J running in HANA, on HANA in AWS. And that's actually communicating back to on-premise CCC. So you can see Really interesting uh, use case there with hybrid. And then one of our first FlexBridge production migrations was MB Codings. So they, they had ECC, uh, they moved to HANA. Uh, that was one of the first test cases actually for production, which they accelerated, not, not covering this webinar, but all the business benefits they covered on cost savings as well as time for the migration. And then lastly, we have Merrifield Garden Centers. This is one of the first production systems in SAP, I'm sorry, in AWS for SAP. And you can see a video, we have it linked there, it's on YouTube, you can search for it, you'll find it there, it's some of the business benefits they've captured. Midwest Tapes an example, one of the many, many DR systems we have running in AWS. Uh, so they have their full ERP system, all their Active Directory, all their app servers, all running DR. And they've been able to test that many, many times a year, so to capture a lot of benefit there on DR. And lastly, demo systems, uh, for Tableau software, which they do a lot of um, build of systems very quickly on AWS for SAP. Oh, I, there's one more slide. I was wrong. I'm sorry. So more examples of DR. So Harvey, very large, very, very large DB2 system, fully replicated into non-premise into AWS. 
And then also this case, and this case actually is one of the customers I referenced before where they have 3-1-I running into cloud that's still replicated with DR. It's one of the first ones we did at AWS. So this is a slide. You can uh, click on these links. But it's uh, probably a little hard to see that from a, a video, so we'll send those if you're interested where you can get all the information. Um, you can request that from our website, or if you follow up with Kristen, uh, she'll be happy to send you those details. So again, free. Here's some upcoming webinars we have coming up, and uh, hope you can attend those. We'll be focusing on those topics. Great, thank you, Patrick. Uh, let's see, do we have any questions that are coming in? Um, if you have a question at this point, we can just type that into the Q&A yep. function, um, and Patrick will start to go through those. Yep, cool, so got a few here coming in. So, sounds like there was some questions on HA. So uh, I'll go a little just brief and, and we're going to have a webinar actually coming up. It's, I don't think it's scheduled just yet, but we will. We'll ask for SAP. So right now, our, going back to that slide, if you can picture that with the, the scenarios on um, the, the cross region, I'm sorry, in, in cross uh, availability zones, our, our recommendation from Susie is there's the capability where you can build the replication using the, the active active scenario within within HANA and we can replicate that over across uh, availability zones. So that's built into the SUSE version 12, which is built for SAP. There's a, an image available on the marketplace for AWS for that. And you can do the HA replication through the, the SUSE software as well as the HANA built-in capability. So that's the active active. Uh, there is a few other third-party products, which this webinar will cover in the future, which provide some additional features for both HA and DR. So we'll probably have that within the next month. So um, if you're interested in that, please let Krista know, and we'll make sure that we get you an invite when that comes out. So that's the uh, one that came on HA. Another one that just came in is around the cross-region latency, uh, so copying between regions. So. Um, from now, you know, we haven't seen issues within what I mentioned before about, um, you know, a hybrid approach between systems. Um, it's, it's been, from a design standpoint, having it between East Coast and West Coast. Um, I forget the exact number, but it's usually, I think, 40 milliseconds is the latency. So it, it's, it's essentially just, a, a, you know, the distance is the, is the biggest issue. The nice thing about having... Uh, you know, the AWS cloud to provision the systems is now you could pick if you have offices, for example, on the East and West coast, and you want to remediate that by putting something in the middle, you can now take advantage of the Ohio uh, region, which just came, you know, came up the last few months from AWS. So you could basically build it in the middle of the country. So the latency for all users would be more evenly distributed. So it's a nice option. And this can be extended for around the region to other you know, around the globe to other regions. So, for example, one of the big areas that causes uh, a lot of network traffic for companies is around the content servers. So we have engineering companies that put their engineering documents, they're very large, you know, they could be 100 meg at, at minimum in size. And so using those content servers, you can geographically disperse the documents where they're stored for the users, they're local. So the nice thing is, instead of having to have a data center in Asia pack, you can just take advantage of that region and put up a couple servers in those different regions to geographically disperse that traffic. So that's a, a very nice feature. So something to look at in your design. Another question that came in is around, we talked a little bit about the, the families. There's a question on the, the, the R4 and the R3 families. Um, so just one that the question was basically, how often do the families get released in those chipsets? Um, so, the, the, what I've observed is it's it's around how often Intel provides those new family of chipsets. Um, from what I've seen so far, AWS doesn't publish when a new family will come out. It's typically going to be around you know, the conferences, which which I've noticed is around April, which are the summits. Those are the like the regional updates, the regional uh, trade shows and, and conferences, and then also there's reInvent, which is in the fall time. So. I think those are the two times when the, the big updates on new products and, uh, and solutions from AWS has come out. So I think those are the times to keep an eye on those to see what might be newly available. And I'll, I'll mention it's, it's actually, this is one of the things we noticed on going to cloud, which is a new feature, let's say, 
where in the past you would buy physical hardware and you'd be locked into the operating system for three to four to five years. So SAP has supported that, you know, let's say Red Hat 5 to be able to run ECC uh, 5 or 6 can run on Red Hat. Well, what's now happening with AWS, they're providing these compute systems so quickly, those chipsets are only supported by the newer operating systems. So for example, the R4 family is only supported by the latest versions of Linux. So the point is, if you're looking to upgrade your HANA system from let's say 244 to 448, um, as an example, you may also have to do an OS upgrade to do that because the chipset that you're going to may not support that version of the operating system you're currently on. So just want to make sure that's something that you make sure you, you, you dot the I's and cross the T's. You do a little homework before you change the instance to make sure you check the, the, the operating systems because that will, the compatibility there will also make sure that you, know, you, you don't have to change out the operating system. So just, just something to keep in note when you're looking to change instance sizes in AWS. And lastly, um, one, one question that just came through here was around the restrictions of, of the operating systems. It was on the slide where, I'm referring to the slide, I should say, of the versions of OS and AWS. So going back to that note on that slide, it refers to the restrictions, for example, and most of the time it's what SAP supports. There's a few that, as I mentioned, the families, um, for example, the R4 instance family in AWS, it doesn't allow um, anything less than for Red Hat uh, version 6 or Red Hat version like 11.4, I believe it is. So again, just got to do your homework on the instances and make sure that it's supported. So I, I think if you take a look at those notes that are in the those slides, you know, there's like three or four notes. Keep an eye on that. If you're doing work with AWS, it changes a lot and you want to make sure that when you build systems, you build it in the best place because you might have a faster instance which is actually cheaper. So make sure you're, you're keeping an eye on those. I think that is all the questions that came through and we're a minute over. So I guess it's a good time to go to our last slide here. Fantastic. So this is where we're at. Again, feel free to reach out to Kristen um, or myself. My email is, uh, is at the beginning. Mine's Patrick at Proterra.com. And Kristen is K.Tanner, T-A-N-E-R at Proterra.com. So feel free to reach out to us. You can also follow us through social media. If you reach out that way, we'll get, we'll get back to you certainly. Or I guess that big email in the middle of the screen, info at Proterra.biz works too. So feel free to reach out. We're happy to help in any way we can. And very much appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you.